Big Fire's grand opening, limited edition voodoo donuts, a trip report from Chris, and more on episode 359 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm all by myself this week. So let's go on with the uh, with the show. Darren, what's up with the Producers Club birthdays? No, just kidding. Hey, what's up? Chris is here. Oh, what's up, man? We're with him. Let's do it. Yeah, Tracy's here. Uh, yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Lee couldn't make it this week. But anyways, <laughs> yes. let's go on. Okay, Lee, you can be on. Really? Am I allowed to be? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes. <sighs> Hello, welcome to the show. I was just going to say that yeah. I've been editing some of our old shows that aren't that haven't been in the archive for quite some time, and I've been going back through them. And I was about to say before we started recording this, how how much more natural and professional we are now compared to how <laughs> we were then. No, I think that's natural. Maybe not. Oh my god! Professional. Never. Twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. Uh, oh, it was so bad. It was untrue. <laughs> I listened and cringed. It was terrible. I remember when I went back for the first time to hear you like do the original ones or like the beginning. It was so like on the money of this is what we have to do and that's how it has to be said. Like, yeah, you literally seemed like a reporter. It was funny. Yeah, it's just <laughs> growing into the hot yeah, of seat. course. Yeah. yeah, definitely. But yeah, I went Car to mics. like 25 was the last one I did. And I forgot we, it was the interview with Daniel Robichaud, the guy who did the um, the CG for the final act of T2 3D. It's such a good interview. I can't wait to get that one back up. Oh, cool. Well, let's start off this show like we always do with the Producers Club birthday. Yay. Oh, wait. Producers Club birthdays. That's right. There's two now. There's two. <laughs> yes. I looked at this earlier. There was one. Now there's two. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we have two. Uh, in the first half of July, as it is. Um, yes, Alexa. <laughs> just reiterating the fact oh, okay. that we don't do them all in one okay, go right. for the month. Okay. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so on the 9th of July, which is tomorrow mm-hmm. as we record. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll just let him do it. Mm-hmm. It is the inimitable Thomas Wagner's birthday. So happy birthday, Thomas. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Here's to slimming, swimming with bow-legged women. Slimming yes, with... Yes, apparently here's to slimming with bow-legged <laughs> women. They're a little overweight, are <laughs> You're going to need a bigger boat for all these birthday <laughs> witches. <laughs> I know where you are. I'm what? Casey Kasem. <laughs> oh, my God. This oh is the longest God, this is birthday right. section okay. ever. And the following day, 10th of July, it is the awesome Stuart Mallet's birthday. Happy birthday, Stu. Woo-hoo. Yeah, happy birthday, Stuart. Top of the morning to you. Clink something together there. Here you go. That's, that's for Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some ice in a glass. Yeah. That yep. will do. Definitely. So yes, happy birthday, everybody. Cut. Happy birthday. Well, awesome. All right. Well, okay. Now let's move on to a grand opening. We're talking about birthdays and everything, right? Well, let's have a birthday of a new restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Big fire. How about that for a transition? Well, Big Fire American <laughs> Fair is now officially open. Um, we saw some like soft openings here and there, but we had its uh, grand opening there. And uh, it's adding a unique dining experience that draws modern inspiration from open fire cooking and the nostalgia of long summer evenings at the lake to the incredible collection of restaurants at Universal City Walk. Now, in case you didn't know, if you're confused by looking at it, Big Fire's unique theming is designed to make guests feel as though they have stepped into a lakeside summer house, creating an atmosphere reminiscent of relaxed evenings spent at water's edge, cooking and creating memories with friends and family. The two-story venue features natural design elements from mix and match fabrics and seating, cast iron, twinkling lights, camp lanterns, and more to complete the outdoor ambiance inside the restaurant. And guests can enjoy... And guests can enjoy one of the most popular fireside treats, s'mores, which they can prepare themselves right at their table. Do it yourself. This should be cheaper than $19 if that's <laughs> yeah. the case. Can you, yeah. can you not just <laughs> take your, your own ingredients as well, then? Probably not. Mm. 
Well, they got that big fire outside. I think you can kind of do what you want out there with yeah. that one. <laughs> Security is doing a, checkpoints now for uh, just a community fire. <laughs> yeah. Is there such a thing yeah, as a marshmallow detector? <laughs> 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 Sir, you are carrying oh. contraband. It's just graham crackers and chocolate. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> And at the heart of the venue is a custom wood fire grill where chefs prepare signature dishes inspired by the style of open fire cooking, but with a significant and modern twist. Chefs thoughtfully match each, each dish with wood species that have been chosen based on the flavor species? they exude. Species? Yes. <laughs> I love the universe. Like the blip. aliens from Men in Black, yeah. Resulting in delectable entrees, sides, and even cocktails that all infuse these smoky spirits. Oh, Chris is into this stuff. I am Groot. From oh. cherry wood to pecan wood. The pairings add bold, delicious flavors to create elevated American fare, including a signature bison burger. New York si- uh, New York I can't New York. <laughs> I'm not even drinking at all. So there's not just ice in that cup, is there? No, <laughs> I'm not even drinking. That's Diet Coke. See what you need to ask York- is what was in the glass with <laughs> the ice that yeah, now isn't there. That. Oh yeah, right. Just so Mm-hmm. New York sirloin strip, freshwater trout, and more. Big Fire is open for dinner beginning at 4 p.m. Now, Chris and Alexa visited the resort for Alexa's birthday, and Big Fire was one of the new experiences they checked out. So, Chris. Thanks, Darren. It was really good. Now, back to you. <laughs> uh, no, we want more than that because you hinted. You hinted <laughs> stuff. <laughs> like, we genuinely well, don't know what Chris and Alexa's experience was like. Chris basically went, um... I'll tell you on Monday. Okay. So, um, yeah, we went there for dinner, like around maybe like seven o'clock. And, you know, it's pretty. We looked around and uh, we were able to warm up by the fire because, you know, the 90 degrees outside (laughs) wasn't enough for us. (laughs) Uh, But uh, we put our name down. I think we waited about 30 minutes to go in there and and, and be seated. So that was pretty quick. Is it a thing at Universal, though? It seems to be whichever restaurant you want to go in, there's always a half hour wait. (laughs) Actually, this is true. Because even when we go to like Vivo, which is one of our favorite restaurants over there, there'll be nobody standing in front. They'll say, give us 15 to 30 minutes. Yep. And then we walk away, and two seconds later, we're getting a text message saying, "Hey, your table's <laughs> ready." When we went to Cowfish, there was it was it was probably three quarters empty, yet there was still a half oh, it'd be half an hour with a booking. No, we didn't have a booking. Book no, because we were going to go to NBC, weren't we? And oh, we right. didn't realize that it only opened for dinner. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was it was about thirty minutes, so that was nice. Even though there was a bunch of people there in the front, um, so the inside just kind of talking about how it is in there. It's it's nicely decorated. Um, it's a little bit, like, crowded in the main area. Yeah. Um, I think they, mm-hmm. you know, uh, they put too many tables together. Yeah. And it feels a little a little tight. But they ended up seating us over, and, and again, I don't know if this was there when um, Emeralds was there, but it's like a back section on the second floor, and it's kind of very uh, cozy, I want to call it. Because it's just, uh, you're against a wall, and they're just couples tables all the way around. Okay. You got like a nice little view outside, so we kind of liked it. Yeah. Um, service was good. They're like, um, oh, we know what's going on with you guys. We got a, we got a place for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. The- <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, the service itself was good. Um, waitress came out. She was very friendly. Started going through everything, explaining the whole you know, fire experience. Hey, you know, everything's with this specific fire. <laughs> Don't put your hand in it. Yada, yada, yada. Chris, how, yeah, long, the, the how, open... how many days it had been open at this point? I think didn't open up the week before or that week. Maybe. I think it was the week before. You went on, which day was it? Saturday. Didn't it Not open on the Saturday. Thursday, I think? Oh, maybe you're right. Yeah. It was in the middle of that week. It opened up officially. So maybe not even a week. Yeah. Yeah. And so so given that, it was surprisingly pretty well put together, I want to say. So we went and ordered. So first she came out with drinks. And actually, this is the funny part that I think. (laughs) Um, And and you guys saw the picture that I sent for it. You know, I'm going to the drink menu and and everything there is everything there is like American. Right. So they have a bunch of bourbons and whiskeys and, and rice. And if you're a whiskey drinker, you'll love it there because they have a great selection. 
Um, so great that they even had a Pappy Van Winkle <laughs> old fashioned uh, for the mere low price of $100. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we got a round and a round for the table behind us as well. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. I can't wait till October. <laughs> Dinner's on Chris. Yeah, but there was only two. These are two person tables. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they, they have a, a pretty large selection and, and we ended up, I ended up ordering a drink and having to change it out because it was pretty terrible. Oh, um, no. Yeah. Um, like, if you like very, I don't know, it's not even fruity, but like a drink that doesn't taste like a drink, then you would like the drink. Oh, right? So, so they I'm have all this over that one. Then. Yeah. yeah th- so they have this one. If you like Dr. Pepper, oh, yes. there's a drink there. Like, it's a, it's a whiskey drink. And I forgot what it was called. I can look, look it up and let you know. Call it Flaming just, Dr. Pepper. No, oh, it no. tasted exactly like Dr. Pepper, right? Oh. It, I didn't even taste liquor in there. So if you like that kind of drinks, then you would love it. Um, ended up having to change it out for like a, a Manhattan or something, which was, it was good. Um, hmm. Yeah. They're getting their stuff worked together, right? I'll give them that much. So then on to the food. Um, for the food, we ended up, uh, we were trying to figure out what we wanted to eat. I think we picked the wrong thing because I've been reading reviews and, and people have been saying the chicken is amazing over there. But we ended up getting um, the Big Fire Grill burger and a bunch of sides because we kind of were really into the sides at that point. Yeah. So we got the burger. We got smashed potatoes. <laughs> we got the pork belly mac and cheese. And then we also ordered as like an appetizer the – I think it was called – what was it? It was the wood oven dip, which was like a spinach cheese dip. It has Gruyere cheese, artichoke, spinach, kale, and it comes with like grilled bread pieces. Not my cup of tea, but I did eat it. Um, Alexa liked it. She said it was good. Um, a little bit above your standard just spinach dip. Mm-hmm. But um, the only other thing that was kind of odd was the bread they bring you. Like, again, everything there, they want to emphasize that that wood oven yeah. grilling type thing. So they put the bread on the grill, and it gives it, like, grill marks. But the bread doesn't have much flavor. That's what like, Tim Tracker said salt. in his review, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it doesn't add any kind of, like, pecan or cherry flavor to the wood or to the to the bread. It just literally tastes like grill mark bread. And just, like, <laughs> okay. burns it a little. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So hmm. I think they should add like a little bit of, you know, salt, pepper, olive oil, something, you know, spice it up a little bit. I just don't bother. This is what we're going to do. Okay. We can sell this. <laughs> what we're going to do is we got to clean the grill, right? <laughs> we're going to use the, the bread. The, bread. Of, the flavor is the essence of the grill. We'll sell them on it. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was good. Um, the burger came out and just like, Similar to Tracker's video, I said the same thing when it came out. It's supposed to be a half pound burger. Mm-mm. It didn't. It barely felt like a quarter pound, yeah. and it was like the the buns. I don't know if it was just the patty was small or the buns were big, but it it was literally like almost double the size of the patty in my opinion. Like it looked kind of like a flying saucer hanging over it, you know? And, and yeah, and I'll be the first to say, I like big buns, and I cannot lie. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you have to match the, the burger oh, to course. the bun. Yeah. And yeah. this picture that I'm looking at that, that Chris sent us, it's it looks like it's maybe filling like three quarters. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then and then the bacon, uh, I love that, just like drape the bacon over so it's like touching the table. That's yeah. lovely. I'm gonna shame. Delicious. I'm gonna shame Chris though. Chris, why did you take your tomato out? Uh, I don't like tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> Sorry, the tomato. Yes, not my thing. But um, I will say that bacon. Now that you mentioned it, was delicious because it's like a jalapeno bacon. Oh, so, and it also had table white on it. Mm. I'm okay that with was that. Definitely worth the bacon portion. Now tell us yeah. about these mashed potatoes. <laughs> so the smashed potatoes Ugh. were okay. Um, they could be better. Yes. The thing that they were lacking was Smashing? frying them a little bit more. So like on a typical smashed potato, it's boil fingerling potatoes, pull them out, smash them, and then fry them. And it gives you this nice mixture of like crispy and, yeah. and, and softness on the inside. It's delicious. Yeah. These were just kind of smashed. 
and I think they threw oil that was hot on it, and like, here you go. So, <laughs> let's face it, they're more like squashed rather than smashed. They look like the exactly. server. They look like the server, like, oh, dropped them on the floor as he was bringing them over. <laughs> to it, scooped them back it's up the, and, and chucked them back in the pot. And, and lightly stepped on them with their shoe. <laughs> well, when I, fir- oh. when I first saw them, I said, they look like somebody sat in them with a sweaty ass. In fairness... <laughs> They look more <laughs> smashed than Tim Trackers did. That's very true. The way they glistened. Yes, yeah. and they yeah. were. They were. The smash was there. It's just the, the frying. I think they just need to do a little bit more in the fryer. And you got yourself a good potato because they tasted yeah. good. I mean, I'm it not complaining like, about the taste. Yeah, it looks like, okay, so it's in a cast iron, like casserole tin, mm-hmm. or, like pan. So so it looks like maybe they like they heated that up super hot and then they just smashed the potatoes into the casserole tin. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and they're like, there you go. That works. <laughs> yeah. I. I uh, it's, but it's something that they can fix. You know, it's, yeah, it doesn't absolutely. take too much effort yeah, on that. And the there's... flavor was there. Like, they tasted good. We really yeah. enjoyed the, the, that portion of and it. And that's the main point, really, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And the other thing was the, uh, the pork belly mac and cheese. Now, mac and cheese could just use a little bit more flavoring. And I don't know if that's like a thing that, you know, some of these restaurants do where they kind of have to make some things a little bit more bland to you know, appease certain people mm-hmm. um, as opposed to some other people that use like more spices, for example, yeah. or more salt or whatever the case may be. So, and it wasn't bad. It just could have used a little bit more flavor, a little more salt or, or something in there. But the pork belly that they threw in there was out of hand. Like it was so good. Like, and it was just small little chunks of pork belly that just were full of flavor. So for us, like, even though the mac and cheese was missing some flavor, if you grab a little piece of pork in there and eat it together, done. It was good. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, we did that, and we were we were pretty stuffed. And we were going to grab some dessert, um, but we were trying to run into the parks to ride something. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, Bear in yeah, mind, Chris said uh, he, was, he got to here at 7 o'clock. Uh-huh. That's going to be an interesting story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And maybe like 6.30. Maybe, you know, around there. It still gave us a few hours because they closed at 10. Let's just say that. Okay. Um, <laughs> and and we, ate, we ate pretty fast. Um, I will say, though, we do want to go back to try some of the desserts. Not the s'mores for us. and Not that they're bad, but I was walking around and yeah. they were carrying this, like, apple fritter. Oh. Like, uh, some kind of apple pie thing. And it just was smothered in this, like, white glaze thing. And it just looked amazing. Like, I literally stopped the server. I'm like, excuse me. Oh, stop right there. <laughs> what is that? So I can order that later. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's the apple, blah, blah, blah. It's delicious. <laughs> Get it. I go, okay, I'll be back. So when Chris goes back, he says, excuse me, can I have the apple, blah, blah, blah? Yeah. yeah. We, don't, we don't have that. <laughs> yeah. We only have the apple, blue, blue, blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, that couldn't be it. She clearly said blah, blah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't get to do any of uh, the desserts that night. But, um We'll go back. Um, overall, I mean, it was it wasn't a bad experience. It's you know we had a good experience. The service was there. Uh, we didn't have any issue with that whatsoever. The food, you know, can use a little bit of work, but it's not bad. It's yeah. uh, we enjoyed it. Um, I do want to go back and try the fried chicken though, because again, I've seen a bunch of people saying that the fried chicken is where it's at. So hopefully, yeah. they're taking guest feedback on it then, because oh, event- yeah. obviously that's where it comes from. Um, See, I would feel uncomfortable going up to them at the end if, like, saying, I just wanted to give you some feedback on the food. But I think that's the only way they're going to grow, isn't it? Because a lot of people probably just go straight out, go straight on the annual pass holder page and rip them to bits complain. like they always did. I mean, I, when when we first talked about Big Fire, the, the table side s'mores, I was like, oh, my God, I am all over that. Having seen how it works, I don't know whether I want to pull $19 out my pocket to pay for it because it just <clears throat> looks awkward Mm. Mm-hmm. I will say though, it's like the food, the menu that they have there. It's a nice addition to the area because they do offer things that you won't find at some of the other restaurants. Yeah. I will say, price wise though, this one is, in my opinion, in City Walk right there on the upper end of of pricing compared to even like I said, one of our favorite restaurants is Vivo, and we also do Toothsums a lot. We love Toothsums. Uh, their prices are really good. I think for what you're getting. Mm-hmm. So this one is a little bit more higher on that, that pricing scale, um, but not too much where it, it's, you know, you would rule it out and say, no, nah, that's too expensive. No, I don't think it's bad for, for what you had there, the burger and the mac and cheese, the dip and 
the this, extra sides and yeah, uh, the drinks. and the drinks. It was what fifty two dollars. That's not bad. Yeah, I didn't think We're that was off. bad with the tip as well. Yeah, that was like the total. I don't think that's bad no, to I be don't. honest for theme oh, park no. food. No. Not at all. Very yeah. reasonable. Yeah. Interesting. So I guess they just uh, upcharge on the desserts to make up for it, and then you didn't buy one, so they're like, "Oh, great." <laughs> But that's why I asked you how long it had been open, Chris. You've got to take... I know you shouldn't have to, but it always seems to be with any restaurants in, in, in the Orlando theme parks that they take a bit of breaking in. Like, I know, I know we rag oh, on yeah, yeah. cowfish all the time, but it seems... I keep I've had so many people say, you need to give it a second go. Mm, I'm starting mm. to come round to that idea. Um, I think it's because I want sushi so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad sushi, yeah, sorry. No, no, uh, the other thing... Now that you mentioned that, which would make more sense, I mean, whenever you go to like a good like barbecue pit or like a, a place that has like an open grill kind of thing, you know, the flavors kind of take a while to really get in yeah. there. Yeah. And, you know, because it's got to be cooked in there for a while and it sounds gross, but, you know, you're getting flavors from everything you've no, cooked on there right. and kind of like builds up, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. maybe six months from now, that wood fire grill that they have, which is, yeah. again, yeah. you can just see it. It's Season. open to everybody. Exactly. It's a, exactly. It's going to get yeah. seasoned, so maybe the food flavors will even start to go up at that point. You know, The one thing that yeah, I've that commented on watching videos of it is the inside of it really reminds me of NBC, Sports Grill and Brew. It really looks like a very similar, mm -hmm. just like the exposed yeah. pipes and stuff. That's what it reminds me of. Even the layout of it with like the upstairs balcony bit, it, it feels very much like NBC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's similar in the layout. I'm excited to try it. We're, we're definitely doing oh, it in October, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. I think yeah. there might be a group of about 50 of us at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And we were talking about uh, desserts, and you mentioned toothsome. I was thinking, you know, nothing is stopping Universal from doing crossovers of these restaurants. No. How, how cool would it be to do some of like the toothsome like, signature chocolates in with the s'mores? Yeah. Oh, that would oh, be what what a great, what a great idea. idea. You know, there just you like go. introduce, yeah. you know, that do like total crossover there. I mean, even you can you can put stuff from Anahitos over there. There's all kinds yeah. of yeah. Well, where is it now that they're like, doing the Voodoo Donut thing? Where's that? It's, this, a, yeah. it's the little kiosk. The no, little kiosk. no, there's no, there's some, walk. no, there's somewhere else is doing. It's like a drink thing with um. Oh yes, with the where was that? I can't. I, my, my brain's gone dead. Tim Trager was talking about it because yeah. it's one some other restaurant that have, have got Voodoo Donut as part of their. It's like a flight or so. I can't remember. My brain's yeah, not working. Yeah, it was working. Beer, the donut the together. No, nope, it was. I can't honestly remember. Hmm. That's going to kill me. I shall. It do wasn't. Some it wasn't in Park. Because it was. It was a, a beer paired with the donut. Because I went, oh, good beer. Don't yeah, like the donut. Oh, good donut. Wouldn't drink the beer. <laughs> Yeah, I can't Smart remember. Though. But you know, crossovers are huge now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, no, that's that's a good idea, Darren. Like, if you want to get like a burger at Two Slums, but you want this jalapeno bacon from this place, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, and then that that way you try something from there, and you go, oh man, we got to try Big Fire next time. Yeah, especially yeah, when you awesome. consider that ninety percent of the restaurants in City Walk are now owned by Universal. They're not. There's there's yeah. only really Cowfish, Hard Rock, and Bubba Gump and uh, Margaritaville that aren't like their own concept. Yeah. Or, you know, like uh, uh, Anahitos, you know, make like a mole out of the, huh? you know, some dark chocolate, you know, do some dark chocolate, yeah. you know, just all, all kinds of stuff like that. So you're hired. Make it happen. <laughs> Universal. I'll even accept a, like a food festival out. You know, we already talked about that. Make our food festival in City Walk yep. happen. And then you can do all these crossovers, a little booths and stuff. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Late night food and wine festival. Yeah, because you potentially get people to try things from restaurants that they wouldn't necessarily go into and try it and go, do you know what? I really like that. I would go into Antihitos, whatever, whichever yeah. one it is. Uh, it's a no-brainer for me. Yep. Yeah. Get cool. I like that. Well, as far as an opening week review, I thought that was... You know, they never particularly. It's very rare you get anyone going opening week I'm and so go, "Oh my problems. god, it was amazing." It's usually yeah. like eh, yeah. it was all right, very but yeah. yeah, yeah. I think as far as those review goes, Chris's was all right. Yeah, and it also it yeah. all sounds like stuff that's easily rectified. Well, that's what you said to me, wasn't it, Chris? When you when we were talking about it briefly, when you said it's all stuff that can be sorted. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, exactly. And it, it wasn't that it was terrible. It was just little things here and there yeah. that can easily be fixed. I think, you know, the training process that they do for the bartenders or the cooks or the, you know, the the line chefs, whatever that is that they need to, you know, modify, they can do that. It's it's easy. It's not like the, you know, wood fires bo- like burning everything or yeah. anything like that. So. <laughs> And it's, yeah. you know, it's a new restaurant in a, in a, a busy theme park. So it's going to get a lot of traffic. Yeah. So they're going to have to learn. They're going to have to learn quickly. Yeah. But it's a welcome addition. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. It's yeah, nice I'm to have you know, even more variety down there. Mm-hmm. I can I imagine agree. that Sunset would be a great place to be in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like I love the little seating area out the front as well with the, the fire pit and stuff. I'd love to just sit, like not even necessarily. Well, yeah, with you don't have to, to worry eat. about it singeing your hair or anything. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us though uh-huh. in florida in summer i don't think we're gonna be able to handle it <laughs> we'll have to go I in, in it was February. On. i gotta yeah. go back I, I gotta even look back at some pictures i, I don't think they even had the fire on all right no, no well that makes <laughs> it was sense. boiling hot out there like death yeah that's <laughs> yeah that, that's a weird thing for florida they're gonna have that fire on like for a month <laughs> out of the year pretty much but Cool. Good deal. Yeah, yeah sounds awesome. Can't wait to try it out. Definitely. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yep. All right. Well, let's go over to Seth with some little things. Hi, this is Seth Kaburski from the Unofficial Guides, and I'm here with a short and soggy edition of all the little things that are new around the Universal Orlando Resort. I just returned from more than a week in Southern California researching the 2020 edition of the Unofficial Guide to Disneyland which will include coverage of the brand new Jurassic World ride that just soft opened a few days ago at Universal Studios Hollywood. I flew home to Orlando and headed straight to Universal Orlando today to try to bring you a Little Things update. Unfortunately, we were hit by a huge torrential rainstorm, and I spent most of the afternoon hiding inside the Today Cafe, eating a chocolate cream puff and waiting for the storm to pass. I did manage to bring you back a few little pieces of information while I was away. He-Man's friend She-Ra made her debut as a meet and greet character at Islands of Adventure. You can meet her outside the Poseidon's Fury attraction in the Lost Continent. Also in Islands of Adventure, they are slowly but surely making progress with Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Your best bet if you want to ride with a minimal weight is to jump in between 5 and 6 p.m. in the evening. Uh, Statistically, it seems like if you get in around then, you'll wait around two hours, which is about the best you can do right now. And if you're an annual pass holder and you want to show everyone your love for Islands of Adventure, head over to the UOAP Pass Holder Lounge on Hollywood in Universal Studios, Florida. They're selling a special commemorative IOA t-shirt. Finally, I saw my first film at the Universal Cinemark Movie Theater since Theater 17 was converted from IMAX to XD. I really like the lounge chairs that recline almost flat, and the picture quality and sound system are also greatly improved. Okay, that'll be all for now. Hopefully I'll be back in a couple weeks with a drier edition of All the Little Things Until then, I'm Seth Kaburski, author of The Unofficial Guide to Universal Orlando, and I'll see you around Universal. And also, the cream puffs were really tasty. (laughs) That didn't sound like a bad way to ride a storm out, mind. Right, true. (laughs) Let me tell you that now that you mention it, we actually, I think, had lunch in there. Okay. One of the dates. And? It was great. We really liked it. Excellent. I am looking forward to trying that out, actually. Mm -hmm considering I wasn't really bothered about it. What did you have, Chris? I forgot the name of the sandwich, but it was just, they have like six, seven different sandwiches named after stuff of the Today uh, show. Al Roker. Yeah. That's the bulls and the bear, isn't it? Apparently is the one to have. I don't remember the the exact sandwich, but it was like a hot one because they have some that are, have one or two that are cold and the rest are hot. It was a hot one, and it had uh, like turkey and ham and um, some aioli sauce in there, and it was it was really good. We really really liked it, and yeah. the dessert like the dessert uh, area just looked amazing. Cool, mm-hmm. so, I definitely want to definitely try that out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm interested. After Seth said that the best time to ride Hagrid is between five and six, and you'll only <laughs> wait two hours. 
I can't wait to get to Chris's review. <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't put the disclaimer that that's when they actually opened the ride. So we'll <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go over to our sponsors for a quick word, and we'll be right back. If you guys are ready to go to Halloween Horror Nights or just a wonderful trip at Universal or anywhere, your team at Mouse and Muggle Travel Company would love to help you. So just send us an email to info at mouseandmuggle.com and we'd be glad to help you go anywhere. All right, we're back and we are going over to Tracy to tell us about some limited edition voodoo donuts. Yes. More donuts, what's not to like? Well, <laughs> well, the fact that they're not going to be there all the time. <laughs> the fact that they're limited edition. So, right, yes. Uh, when Chris was at the parks, he stopped by Voodoo Donut and checked out the two new limited edition donuts, which are the Pina Colada. It's a yeast gel with pineapple yeah. and coconut Bavarian, which I guess is a cream, uh, topped yeah. with vanilla. Pass. But, yeah. I'd have it. No, coconut. Yeah. Coconut. No, yeah. thank you. What you. And the other one is the Key Lime Donut. Oh, yes. Another yeast shell filled with Key Lime Bavarian, topped with vanilla and graham cracker crumbs. You have to say graham. It's graham cracker. It's got a H in it. I know. I am English. I'm pronouncing it Graham. I know. It's got vanilla and Graham Look, Darren and I had, it. It. Darren, yes. Darren and I had an argument about this at Halloween Horror Nights when we were there last time, and I got told off that it's pronounced graham. Graham. Mm. <laughs> well... I'm the boss. They're gray ham. Sure. So yeah, you can put whatever you want on your donuts if you want gray ham. Okay, exactly. Exactly. I have graham crackers. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yes, key lime and pina colada donuts. I try both of them. I try one. Yes. Chris, you did try them both. I had to. I have to do the hard work in this show. Guys, <laughs> right? I had to eat both donuts. And. Um. They were so good, both of them. <laughs> they were so good. Um, it doesn't mention it here, but like, well, we have a picture posted up on our Instagram, so yes. go check it out. And on the Facebook seen page it. as well. Yeah. So the the pina colada ones actually shaped like a pineapple, That's awesome. and so the the stems are actually little pretzels. So cool. if you're into that kind of stuff, then they have pretzels in there for you. Um, they were both delicious. Uh, I will say, I'm not a huge. So I love coconut flavorings on things. I don't like when there's like coconut shavings because the texture is just kind of weird. Uh-huh. This is a very, the pina colada was a very subtle um, pineapple and coconut flavor. Not either of them kind of overbear each other with flavor. It's very subtle and it's, it was a delicious donut. So, but the winner was a key lime donut. Uh-huh. It was, it, it, it had, you know, that tart flavor in there, but not too tart. And the gray ham, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, the gray ham crumbs, it was it was just the perfect donut. It, it was so good. So if you are going to Orlando, get them. Yeah. I hate that they do these limited edition ones. It's not fair. It's like I really wanted to try the Halloween Horror Nights one. I hope they bring it well, out There'll be another this year. one. But well, the problem, yeah, but my, what I'm annoyed at is it might be a different one, not the same well, one. I'm well, sure he, one. He did say, because we asked them, I asked specifically, because oh, yes. I know you want to get your hands on these donuts. I was asking how long they're there for. He said, these are like the summer donuts, so they'll be there probably till about, you know, August, September. And then during that time, they'll have a pumpkin style donut. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy. Hell yes. So I figured you'd like that. It yes. better be in the shape of like a jack-o'-lantern. I can't see why it, it better would. look be awesome. like a jack-o'-lantern. That there, would be awesome. There's a crossover with the Wizarding World. I was thinking oh. more Halloween Horror Nights, but... Pumpkin juice donuts? Yeah. <laughs> no, that would be gross. No! Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it is good that they keep doing all these specialty ones. You know, I think one of, that Voodoo Donuts being one of the best additions to the parks because Without I love that, they, like I say, they, it's not just, this is our menu and that's it. We're going to yeah. keep giving you different ones to try and it's fun as well yeah. it's not like you know we all go to Krispy Kreme or Dunkin Donuts and know that you know it's that's what you get yeah whereas these yeah. are a bit of fun and themed to the location yeah. they're at you know you've got Universal's own the Orange Sickle we've had a Grinch yeah. one we've had the Halloween Horror Nights one well, it's it, every, every outlet that they've got has its own specialty I still want them to do the <laughs> balls oh, I know <laughs> hmm? what <laughs> we'll go have to- you not seen the <laughs> balls Darren I have 
No, I, I have. have. All right. Chris, have you not seen the <laughs> cool balls? Then? I've never <laughs> seen the <laughs> balls. <laughs> what are we talking about here, guys? Um, if you go to their non theme park Portland. locations websites, no, because they've just opened another one. Well, Portland's the original. And have a look at their menu. There is a donut called, I'm going to have to keep bleeping this out. They've there. got a couple of good ones. The f- balls. And it, is exa- it does exactly what it says on the tin. It is a you said it looks like balls. It oh, yeah. Well, I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what it tastes like, Chris, in fairness, because uh. I haven't tried it, but it has a cream in it. I don't know what type of cream it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh i found it okay wow <laughs> no, did you? there's also an old dirty <laughs> he sat up no but me. they still do <laughs> they do the odb at orlando though yeah but it's just called the odb, the ODB. everybody does all dirty when you stop giving me things to bleep to get your mouth work tomorrow and i can edit this properly mm. <laughs> let's go ahead and uh move on oh actually we have a clip or a what voodoo do you do appropriately? Hi, this is Sonia Miranda from Austin, Texas, and I'm here with my son, Alex. Hi. And we just went to Voodoo Donut, and we're going to tell you which voodoo do we do. I had the voodoo doll, which is a glazed donut with chocolate frosting and raspberry filling. I had the Halloween Horror Nights donut, which is glazed, has frosting, and has a raspberry Bavarian cream filling. And, oh, and then I had the Diablo Rex, which is a chocolate cake donut with chocolate frosting and chocolate chips. And it has a white pentagram on the top. And then I had some of my son's donuts. He had a dirt, which is an Oreo with vanilla frosting on glazed. The loop, which is Fruit Loops, vanilla frosting and glazed. And then the maple bacon bar. My favorite donut is the Voodoo Doll. It's just too cute. It's got a pretzel steak through the heart. I, it's just too much fun. But the Diablo Rex was really good. That is the best cake donut I've ever had. It's really soft and light and moist. It was, oh, it was excellent. So Alex, what was your favorite donut? I think my favorite donut was the Loop Donut. It was fruity and also it was much easier to eat than the dirt donut. Though I didn't really like the maple bacon bar. Like the bacon, it was kind of like a bacon that had been cooked, then kind of like just sits in like a warmish environment. You also oh, had uh, like my Diablo Rex, yeah, right? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Very and you had, you had the bubble gum donut here in Austin. Yeah. But you didn't mm, like that. Yeah, it wasn't that good. Though I did like the piece of bubble gum in the middle. It was sticky because of all the frosting was Ooh. on it. But anyway, so we'll be back next month for another one with my husband because we're going to be there at Thanksgiving. And for now, <laughs> bye. Yeah, she tried the Halloween Horror Nights donut from oh, that one's been, what, what that was. from 2018. <laughs> wow, that one sitting around for her, huh? <laughs> I know you wouldn't sit on a, a which would you do for that long. I know. There's oh, still okay. another one from Halloween Horror Nights last year. <laughs> <laughs> I do well, apologize, people. Yeah. Sorry, and, so, okay, sorry, Kenny. Next time, next time we start, you know, uh, Swear Fest 2019. Uh, don't follow it up with the innocent voice of a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How now she's going to be like, oh, you want to listen to you? You're on the show. And then she's going to start it just 10 seconds too early. <laughs> He's going to forget to bleep one of the bleeps. Clear all that out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. the Diablo Rex sounds like it should have some sort of chili in it. I expect it to be like a chili chocolate. A spicy, yeah. Like, just not, not even like spicy, just like a little kick. Yeah, like the... Um, I should be filled with chili jam. Like the um, the chili chocolate... Ice cream in yeah. Florent Fortescue's. I expected it to be something like that. Mm-hmm. But I can't wait to try them all. It's if you're going to eat them all. Ready. Oh, hell yes. We're going to get a coffin and also coffins. Because yes. <laughs> coffin each. We're not surviving. <laughs> yes. Insulin shots. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Do you have adult size coffins, please? Thank you. All right. Tracy. Yes. You want to tell us about the Endless Summer Surfside Inn? Yeah. 
Let's talk about endless summer opening, shall we? So, the seventh mm. hotel, Universal Orlando Resort, uh, Universal's endless summer resort, the Surfside Inn and Suites opened its doors to guests on June the 27th. As the destination's first value category hotel, now Universal Orlando offers a hotel for every style, every family and every budget, complete with exclusive theme park benefits and a seamless vacation experience. Sounds good. Brought to life by the award-winning Universal creative team, Surfside Inn and Suites offers guests a relaxed and easy retreat with a surf and beach vibe woven throughout the hotel. 750-room hotel is a destination seventh property in partnership with Lowe's Hotels and Company, giving guests the immersive experience they have come to expect at Universal Orlando Hotel with rates starting as low as $73 per night for a seven-night stay. At uh, the arse end of the year at some point, because, yeah. uh, yes, we'll get to that. We will. Yes. Um, so at Surfside Inn and Suites, guests can experience all that the Hotel and Universal Orlando have to offer, which includes two bedroom suites, these suites which make up more than half the rooms at Surfside Inn and Suites. Oh, we need to condense that. Just call it Surfside Inn. Yeah. Uh, sleep up to six and feel like a spacious beach retreat. Uh, with two separate rooms, families no longer need to connect rooms for extra space. There's also a kitchenette area, a picnic table for meals and hanging out, and a bathroom with a separate bath and vanity area so multiple people can get ready at once. I'm still not feeling this two-bedroom suites that sleep up to six. Why we stayed in the two bedroom suite in the Enclave suite that sleeps up to six. Yeah. Actually, it probably slept up to eight. I'm sure one of them's a pull out couch for two. So. Are the two like, separate like, bedrooms? Or are the is one like off the yeah. kitchenette and living area? There were two separate. You don't remember oh, okay. watching Tim Dragons? It wasn't there. Well, there's three beds in there, right? No, uh, I think it's yeah. I think it's like two doubles and like a queen or a king, mm. and then a pull out bed. Okay. For the couch. I'm kind of more thinking about groups of people going. Yeah. Um. Anyway, sorry. Uh. So the, the two bedroom suites begin as low as $111 for a seven night stay, and exclusive theme park benefits, which guests receive ex- exclusive benefits including early park admission to the theme parks, quick complimentary resort wide shuttle bus transportation, charging privileges with their room key, and more. You're going to get to a point soon where that early park admission isn't going to be worth no, an awful lot when you've got seven hotels worth and then you've yeah. got, what, the dockside and suites opening soon. You've got eight yeah. hotels worth of guests potentially going in for early park admission. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be... Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be what it was. Unless they open earlier. Or start closing later for... I don't know. Yeah. That's down to them. Um, so we have the Beach Break Cafe, uh, a casual dining food court, which is up for breakfast, lunch and dinner, inspired by food trucks, local joints, backyard barbecues. Uh, Beach Break Cafe's menu will be super affordable with most dishes under $12, which isn't bad at all. From breakfast pizzas to comfort food and power balls, Beach Break offers something for everyone along with grab and go options for guests heading to the theme parks. Oh, there you go, Chris. Yeah, your bus breakfast sorted. I saw that sandwich in Tracker's <laughs> video. And I'll, I'll work, where's the bus at? Awesome. <laughs> All this stuff could be piled up onto a nice, nice pita to take with you. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. Uh, now, there's a surfboard shaped pool, which actually I thought looked more like a fish. But, it does. It does. You know, uh, it's a zero entry pool as well, which is really good because that means it's accessible to everybody. And they claim it is something guests of all ages will enjoy, which they probably will. Um, <laughs> hey, what a surprise. It's in the shape of a surfboard, which makes it one of the, the most... surfboard shape pool is? Yeah, what? I know, right? Blew my mind. Uh, um, which makes it one of the most fun-themed pools at Universal Orlando. Does it really? Mm. Surely the guitar shaped one at the Hard Rock thinking. Hotel is probably the most fun themed pool. So what's like the theme at this place? You're like at a beach. Yeah. <laughs> Surfing. And there's surfers walking around. Surfing, Literally. Huh? Yeah. I do hope they keep that theming up though. That was kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um so Surfside Inn also has a laid back pool bar. The sand bar. That's clever. Um, which serves refreshing and beach-inspired beverages. So, sandy drinks, then. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, addi- additional hotel amenities include a Universal Orlando Vacation Planning Centre, Universal Studios Store, a game room, and a fitness centre. Apparently, the game room's tiny. Yeah, fitness centre looks good, though. Um, now, staying in the action, guests who stay at the Endless Summer Resort, Surfside Inn. Uh, they are located just minutes away from Universal Orlando's three theme parks. I'm not going to name them because you all know what they're called, uh, as well as City Walk. Um, the sister property, uh, Dockside Inn, is scheduled to open in March 2020. And this will add 2,800 rooms to the destination, bringing the total room count at the resort, uh, well, at Universal Orlando Resort, to 9,000 rooms by 2020. That's quite a lot. It's interesting, again, going back to, I know I keep bringing it up whenever we talk about the hotels, but when we had Russ Dagan to talk about Cabana Bay being built, he Mm -hmm. said at that point, and this was, what, five, six years ago, that their intention was to have 15,000 on property rooms. That's a lot of rooms. It is when they currently only got 9,000, and that's with opening these two hotels as well. So what announcements have we got coming over the next few years, then? Obviously, something down with wherever they're building Fantastic Worlds. Oh, yeah. And those kind of stretches on property as well. But Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I guess I guess all of Orlando is going to be their property soon. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> sounds like. So. They're slowly picking things here and there and then slow. <laughs> but it yeah. looks cool. So. We watched Tim Tracker's video. I love the, the, like, the wooden wave aesthetic oh, over that, the check-in yeah. desks. Well, it's on the other side yeah. as well. Isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. It, it's just... One game to play is count the surfboards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it looks decent. I mean, it's it does for a budget I hotel. The rooms look pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, and, and for something that's and budget, it looks almost high end. But then, it's very clean. I know it's new, yeah. but I'm going to have this. I'm going to say the same thing to you, like that I said to Tracy when we were watching Tim Tracker's video. It looks very nice and it looks quite well appointed. But is it going to suffer from the same thing that Darren found out when he stayed at Aventura, where it looks nice, but when you actually get up close and personal, it's not. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say look, it, looks it looks much nicer than Aventura. Aventura looks like they like wedged a hotel into a small spot that they had there. Yeah. And kind of kept it as bare bones as possible because it is on property. So with this one, it's off property in a sense. And, you know, you got to do something to make it nicer. Just the early entrance can't be it. Uh-huh. So this one, if you look at two comparison videos, just from that, it looks a lot nicer. Um, I guess until somebody sleeps there and, and sees how it is, which I haven't seen anything online yet about people complaining. No, so. no. And I was actually talking to someone who was staying there yesterday and he said he really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the, the two bedroom suites are three queen beds in there, okay. which is really nice. Mm. Mm. Um, but I'd yeah, they, we said when, when they first announced it, the competition, they, they really had to sort of push themselves because you can stick relatively anything on site because you're close to the parks and stuff, but competing with the cheaper hotels on iDrive, that price point was an issue, and it was Todd in the Producers Club uh, is looking at book, was it three nights there in a couple of weeks? And it, I think they quoted him something like, was it $180 for a night? Something like that. And eventually he went through the email he got and got it down to like 88 I want to say. Yeah. For three nights? No, for, for like per, per night, night, I think. I don't know, but I'm saying he got it down to that price per night for three nights only. Because that that $79 rate is only when you stay seven days or more. That's true. Let me so find that's interesting post. that they did that for him. Because I'm like pricing stuff out right now for next year just to see how the prices look. And the only way to get it down is with a week or more stay. We looked at it as well for coming over in February. Mm-hmm. And it was... It was expensive enough that I couldn't justify putting the extra money into it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we know where, where we're we staying. staying. Uh, right. So he said using his military discount or annual pass holder discount, the best they could do was 130 a night. Um, and he complained, said that I thought the deal was like 85 bucks a night. And they told him, yes, yeah, seasonally, it's July, kids out of school, peak season. Yeah. Um, so Fair he clicked enough. through his email and he ended up getting the room for 82 a night. But it, that was only because he went fishing around doing uh-huh. his doing the hard work. Which you don't need to do. It was do a promotional you? email? I assume so. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, you don't have to run around and go fishing and everything 
because we've got most muggle at our fingertips here. Um, if right. if you're looking to stay here or anywhere in Orlando or anywhere, you know, give them a call, mouseandmuggle.com. They're absolutely brilliant. Even if you've got something already booked, this, I'm pretty sure there's going to be something they can do to help you out. Yeah, I know, you know Robin. Are, Robin and Michelle are really good at what they do. Because really Robin good. messaged Todd at the time and said, we could have done all that for you. And probably, you know, we know all the hints and tips. So, yeah. And, you know, we want to promote them as uh, oh, absolutely. It is self-serving because we want... Michelle, Robin, and Michelle to to to. We have a good become, relationship. We want it to they continue, are, and it's and it's those bookings that help. So even if you've already booked an on-site hotel, give them a call and see what they can do for you because yeah. it won't won't make any difference to you. It just gives them, you know, yeah. gives them a help, and that helps us. And yeah. and it's a might, no-brainer yeah. on your side. All you can do is save money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, and they might be able to get you a better deal. Don't cost money. It's not a scam. Exactly. Oh like no, 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 we definitely wouldn't promote anything like that. The people hear like that so much that like, oh, it's no cost to you. Those kind of things yeah. all the time, but no, for real, this, that's this how travel agents work. Like, they don't make. That's not how they make their money that way. No. They, they they make their money other ways. And yeah. and you know the big thing for them is making sure they provide you a quality service so that you keep coming back to them and exactly. you tell your friends exactly. about it, you know, so that they get more business to go back. So you're only going to get awesome service from them, and they can do amazing things. It's I mean, crazy what they yeah. Because so. we've yeah. we've had sponsors on the show before, travel agents, and this is the first time I can genuinely say that we're we're not doing it just to promote them. We have a hell of a relationship with Robin and Michelle. You know, yeah. they've been listeners for a long time, and and we want to give them as much help as they are with us. You know, the weekender is happening because of yeah. Robin and Michelle. Yep. So, yep, which we mm-hmm. saw some people, so get on there. <laughs> so shameless plug over and done with. <laughs> <laughs> But it looks cool. It does, it does. look cool. It and looks it, nice. I, I would be interested in it at some point. It was just, it was a little bit out of our budget mm. at this point. I'll, 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 I'll admit, uh, having seen what was there before, I'm amazed at how big that complex actually looks. Yeah. yeah it's you know, with the big. road system and stuff in it. it it's, I didn't realise how much land was actually there. It's going, I said to Tracy when we were watching Tim Tracker's video, it's going to be quite bizarre when we come over to Orlando because it's been, it's been... Everything has changed. Four years since we came out, which you wouldn't think was a long time, but so much at Universal has changed since then. There's yeah. what, like three hotels opened? Volcano Bay. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't think the we're going to recognize the place. It's going to be bizarre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's going to be pretty crazy. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Not long now. I, I was surprised at the prices. I was expecting this to be a lot cheaper. But yeah, that's yeah. The thing. It, it's difficult, it's, isn't it? It's not really budget. No, it's lower. It's lower budget level, as far as theme but, park resorts yeah. go. It'd be interesting to do a comparison with yeah. like a similar Disney property. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, no, that there. I mean, Disney's not really one to compare to because it's going to be crazy expensive too. Um, not just that, but Disney also has all the area around their property. Right, only their hotels. Right, true. In, so yeah, Universal, compete with anybody. Hotel, yeah right down the street that you yeah. can do. Yes. And then when you look at it, you also got to incorporate parking prices per night if you take a car. Which That's a an interesting. Do. do we? Does anyone know, do we pay for parking at Surfside? Do I would know? assume not. I'm, really? You don't think? I would think, because I think Cause we've... Uh, this is one of the things I brought up when we first find out isn't it? that no, none of the other ones, at least that I know of, it's a laws, isn't down it? I drive wouldn't charge you for parking. Is it still a laws? Yes. That they'll charge? I don't think they will. I think they'll be shooting themselves in the foot. I don't if think they care. They do. Because parking's ridiculous. Overnight parking's $14 per vehicle, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So you got to put that into your cost. Yeah. So Whereas it, most yeah. hotels, you don't have to pay. So you're adding another $100 for a week's stay. That's That's... That's really for people, bad. For people who are going to a budget hotel because they're on a budget, that's going to price people out. That is a bad move. I, but how many people will look at that? How many they book the price of the hotel. Price? Exactly. Oh, you book the hotel not thinking, oh, it's not bad, and then get stung with a $14 a night parking yeah. charge. Mm-hmm. I would park it across the road at Walgreens and leave it there. And probably the customary universal, just so you know, $100 hold on your cards everywhere. Oh, yeah. See, the weird thing it says 
Overnight parking is $14 per vehicle per night. And then day parking is $45 per day per vehicle. Does that mean if you leave your car in the car park and potentially like get the bus over yeah, there? It's, it, they always do that. Um, Aventura is the same thing. Right. Uh, if you want to go to a restaurant, as long as you go to a restaurant or something and spend over 20 bucks, they validate your okay. parking. All right. I think they do the same at Disney, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I don't people. know if there's anywhere here to do that, so I, mean, I wouldn't expect uh, visitors to come visit you while you're there. Yeah, that stinks. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Cheaper for your visitors to go park at Universal. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, a market island. thing, right? So, I mean, after they're open for a while, we'll see. They have um, adjust their prices, maybe. They just put them up at all the other hotels over the years, so. Yeah. But what they're competing with on iDrive there is, yeah, you're you're looking at hotels that, that can go down to $60, $75 yep, for yeah. probably comparable rooms. Yep. Um, with shuttles that go to Universal, because all of them have those same shuttles. Yep. Um, if you want to use those, you know. So. Hmm. Mm. Food for know. food. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they'll hurt. I don't no, think they'll don't hurt think off it, but yeah, it's a weird one. If you're budget conscious, you wouldn't. That's, that's something that people do need to take into account, regardless of where the state is. Is there a charge for yeah. parking your vehicle? Because a lot of people don't know. So that's just a good general tip, anyway. Especially for coming over from the UK, you, know, you when, wouldn't expect it. But I think there. Yeah. I think the selling point here is that the suite, right? If yeah. you have six people, yeah, because as opposed to renting two rooms at some of these other hotels, yeah. you only need one here. So if you kind of do the math there, it may work out yeah. in your favor yeah. staying at this yeah. place. Mm-hmm. And Clown that's why they made most of their rooms suites. As yeah. far as I'm yeah. aware, there's only one hotel at that end of I Drive that has suites, and that's the one we're staying in. Yeah. Because I've looked to see if we have any other options, and these are the only two options with a two-bedroom suite. So, yeah, I suppose you compete. You're not necessarily competing with the monumental movie land. Yeah. So a little nicer than in mine. Uh, mine. <laughs> just, just a tad. Yeah, there's no mold in the corridors. But yes, go back to being yeah. positive. It does look lovely. Yes, it does. I, I love it all the theming. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Need a surfboard. They've got plenty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they will hook you up with one, I'm sure. I think it's probably like at other hotels where you can take a towel. You could probably take a surfboard from here and they won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just go down to that zero entry. <laughs> Get someone to push it off. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Okay. Well, let's get things back on track here. And we'll talk about Hagrid's opening and issues with it. <laughs> so Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM is still having some issues. It continued to open later in the day, up until the Thursday before Independence Day, at which time they opened it at 9 a.m. for the whole weekend. Uh as a recording, we're still expecting it to go back to delayed openings. Uh, but we believe that shows that they're making some progress with it, and hopefully by the time the weekender descends on it, everything will be fine. They need to get Lunar in to check for Nargles. It might be. (laughs) But as we've alluded to several times on the show, Chris, you made it to Hagrid's, and uh, it sounds like you had some interesting (laughs) times. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Your review of your, as Lee puts it, your ordeal. (laughs) Yeah, so we tried to go on, on... was that Friday or Saturday? Oh, Saturday. Saturday. Was it yeah. after Big Fire? Yeah, yeah. So we tried to do that. We still had a couple hours left in the park. So I was trying to take a page out of um, Thomas's book and and try to write it like late at night, mm-hmm. right before, you know, like a little sweet spot so you can get in there with not too long of a wait. And it was just closed the entire time. Mm-hmm. Like they wasn't open and, and people were like gathering around over there to see if they would open. And, you know, we did that whole same thing and it, it, it just was closed down. And we had been monitoring throughout the day on the app and it, it was just constantly, you know, closed. So mm-hmm. I don't know how long it was closed that day. Cause we did volcano Bay instead during the daytime. And so we tried again on Sunday and on Sunday, let me see, we went there in the afternoon, right? Cause they say they open up at noontime. Yeah. And we got there around 11 o'clock, 1130, and it was closed. And they said, you know, there was a whole big thing. They have people queuing up over by Poseidon's. And I have no idea how those people did it because, again, it was 
a hundred degrees with 80% humidity. We were dying just walking around and people just standing out there. So props to you guys. Um, but yeah, they were telling people like, Hey, we don't know exactly when it's going to open. It may open around two, but we can't guarantee you that. Uh, we suggest you do other things. If you want to come back, um, you're more than welcome to, uh, you know, wait here. If you want to, we're not going to tell you, you can't. So, you know, people are sitting there, that's their choice. They're deciding to wait and Universal's not promising anything. Yeah. So we ended up going around the park and we just were constantly eyeing the app to see when it would, you know, say open and it wouldn't, there's like three different statuses that I had noticed for the, you know, previous days. It's like delayed. Then there was, if it didn't say anything, it's just closed altogether. And then there was like a third one. So we were just trying to see like any other status other than nothing. Um, and I mean, don't quote me on these times, but I think <laughs> the ride didn't open up until five or six o'clock that day. Wow. Oh, like it was, it was crazy. Cause we were trying to check up on as much as possible. Um, and then we kind of heard from like somebody else that, Oh, it's open. And, and, and so like we made a mad dash over there and, we're able to get inside and we, I was telling Lee, we waited, you know, closer to two hours or something like that. It was over an hour for sure. There you go. Then that Seth was right. Get there between five and six and you'll wait two hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one, I think it's just because they had just opened it. I think a lot of people that were sitting around all day had either passed out from heat exhaustion <laughs> and were wheelchaired out of the park or they just decided to give up and walk around because it was, Imagine being there. Those people were there from nine in the morning until six o'clock in the afternoon with this heat. Like it was no joke. It's a um, crazy heat too. It's not like normal. Yeah. It's- I mean, Darren, you know, you, you live over there. It was, yeah. it was so bad on Sunday. Like yeah. we constantly had to stop inside of gift shops to cool down. And we almost just left the park altogether because of how bad it was, but we were really determined. Like we really wanted to ride it. And, and so we found that little sweet spot there. Now, I don't know if that applies every time. So, take that you know as a little disclaimer um but yeah we were able to go and 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 write it at that time uh without having to do like three four five hours whatever it is um and then it quickly just so you know it quickly jumped to like 200 and something minutes wow shortly thereafter wow. like it it just jumps like it's it's open all right you know go up there uh in time um so yeah we did that um i don't want to give away any spoilers? Because if you're listening and you're like me, you really wanted to experience it for yourself. So we hadn't really seen anything prior to writing it. Well, you shouldn't um, have listened to the last show then because there was plenty on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you know, they have... Um, so inside the queue, the queue's, the queue's pretty cool. Um, it's better than Dueling Dragons was or Dra- Dragon Challenge. Um, there's a scene in there, like a Musion scene similar to that of uh, Escape from Gringotts. Um, there's another really cool room when you're going through there, which Lee, you've already seen the whole thing, right? Yeah, or we not? watched. We actually watched it um, yesterday because Universal pulled a, uh, posted a full video of the walkthrough of the queue. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So that room is kind of cool. The one that you have, like, you know, something going on on the roof above you, and it's kind of part of the story. Um, the only thing is, it's really loud in there, so it's really hard to hear. <laughs> everything that's going on but yeah we went all the way through and 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 got to ride i rode the driver's seat alexa was in the sidecar and it was honestly the best ride i've ever ridden before like it was just out of hand chris have you ridden um, flights of passage i have not done that yet nice. so but i've seen some videos of it and i've heard things about it and and all that seems really cool the thing about this ride, and now I haven't gone to I haven't been to Bush Gardens in years, so I can't compare it to like the roller coasters over there. But as a roller coaster, it's just such a fun roller coaster. It's not crazy rough like you would ride. It was it wasn't like Dueling Dragons where that was like an extreme thrill ride, um, or some of these other ones. But the the combination of the story they have going on mixed in with all the set pieces around and then the launches and the fact that you're riding a motorcycle like you really just if you just look forward and just think about it like that you're on this motorcycle it really feels like it and it feels like you're on a flying motorcycle going around doing all this really cool stuff it was it was i mean it was amazing it was awesome um there's uh two 
things on that coaster and I'm not going to give it away because I don't want to, you know, spoil it for <laughs> anybody else. Um, but they, they, they shocked us a bit. Um, especially the <laughs> second surprise in there. I was going to say, because you've already done the first one on Expedition Everest, have you not? I did. <laughs> but the only difference on this one is, and I feel like on Everest, you kind of see it coming a little bit more. Yeah. This one, this one really, you don't see it coming. And it's like, ah, we're going to die. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, you know, it was, it was amazing. It was great. There was... You know, I highly recommend it to anybody going out there. It's it's the best, it's the best coaster I've ever ridden. Um, I want to say it's the best ride I ever ridden. If we're doing just a general ride comparison, right. um, so yeah, it was it was amazing. I can't wait. I really can't. Yes. Oh. Not long. About eighty days. We already yeah. decided we're heading. We're checking in, grabbing out, grabbing our annual passes, and going straight in the park and trying to get on it. Have we? Yeah. Yeah, I have. <laughs> No, that's how I then, not we. But okay. <laughs> okay. We have. I'll grab a beer on the way by. And Darren, grab go. Darren while you pass. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> smuggle me in. <laughs> smuggle you in? <laughs> yeah, smuggle me in. <laughs> 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 oh, man. There's twin beds in uh, our room. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, definitely. Yeah. I'm still trying to find a way to get into the parks because I got to ride this thing. So yes, we'll see. It might be happening. It's it's hard to stay away. So that's the thing. If it was in the other park, you'd be able to do it on the RIP tour, but it's not. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good point. Maybe is the RIP tour? Are you that are we that special that they can take us over to the other side? Well, we can only I'm ask. Just wondering that. You can ask. Yeah, like I want to ride that in the other park. I would say probably yeah. not, but you can only ask. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. We'll just walk through the field of screams and get over there. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Oh. You'd have to go back about 15 years like, yeah. but yeah. So the few things I yeah, remember got, from that trip. They have a DeLorean and a time train. Yeah, Very true. true. I think we can handle this. But yeah, talking about uh, rides, new rides, new rides opening. Over at Universal Hollywood, Jurassic World finally opened. And this was, of course, the remake of Jurassic Park, the ride um, that we've talked about on the show before. But if you've been following things over at Universal Studios Hollywood, then you'll know they closed down that ride on September 3rd last year to convert it to Jurassic World, the ride. Uh, And it reopened recently, and our friends over at Theme Park Duo wrote it, and they have sent us their review. Hey, I'm Gabe. And I'm Nikki. And we are the the Theme theme Park Park Duo. Duo. Thank you, UUOP, for inviting us on to do a small, quick review of Jurassic World, the ride. We just got back from riding it earlier today. Literally. Fresh. I'm still wet. What? Ew. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm damp. Okay, uh, ew, more ew, <laughs> extra ew. I don't know. Mildewy. <laughs> that's even worse. Okay, moss is grown on the right side that's, of the body. Let's keep going. Move okay, on. Uh, Jurassic World ride. Um, I liked it a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. I liked it too. I, I really, I've been thinking about it and thinking about the old ride, and I'm not sure. You've if been it's, marinating for I a while. I have been. I'm not sure if I like it better. I may like it just as much. There's certain things that I like about the previous ride that I that you like more that I like more. Yeah, I think I land on the same place that you do, and yeah. it's pretty much uh, it's just as good as what it used to be. Yeah, and you know our reasoning for that, and we're not going to go into a whole bunch of detail, but to give a generalization, which I think we fall in the same uh, kind of area, is the first half I think was better in the original, but the second half. Is significantly improved. Yes. Uh, the sense of danger, I feel like, is significantly improved uh-huh. with a lot of the set design. Um, I feel like you're missing a little bit at the very beginning with the opening of the doors and uh, kind of having that big reveal of all the dinosaurs lifting their heads. And I understand that, you know, there's Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. They're yeah. two different things. Mm-hmm. I think they could have maybe have done something to at least retain a little bit of that feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's not my job, so it's hard for me to put words to that but um i understand that they're two different movies and they kind of have to be handled a bit differently yeah if i had a like a choice i would love to have keep kept that opening scene yeah you, and, you just wanted the big doors in the archway that's like yeah. jurassic park or have it change to jurassic world and yeah and have something else like change it a bit and, yeah it just i think the the opening just felt a little bit more just like you kind of just stumble into it rather than this grand entrance yeah and yeah. and it it does feel a lot more like a tour now, yeah, 
as Which opposed to a ride. Which it's supposed to. Yeah, no, it, it yeah. definitely does its job. It yeah. definitely feels like a tour because as soon as you hit that little uh, little hill that kind of brings you into everything, it starts off the tour and it's describing the things you're going to see. And the first yeah. thing that you see, the first thing that you see, and this is no spoiler because everybody knows, is the Mausosaurus, yeah. the giant swimming monster, which that scene gets you completely soaking it's, it's wet. Actually, I think it's pretty clever the way they did it. They made both sides of the the area you're in like it's tank and it can swim underneath you and go on both sides and, yeah. and, and it swim splashes all the way past it and, so yeah. it makes it look huge and so it's pretty cool i do like that part and i think it's a great use of sc- like great i'm gonna say screens. it it's a great yes, use it of screens it makes it feel like the 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 animal is yeah. a lot larger than it really I was is very worried about them putting more screens in this ride or any screens in this ride but they did it well yeah and then you go straight from that into stegosaurus the cove stegosaurus cove which is Basically the same, just yeah. refurbed from Jurassic Park, the ride. And then after that, it pretty much takes a different turn. I mean, like, it's obviously, the that, that, but, but like the, the everything goes wrong is the same yeah. almost. Just like the the setting and what actually happens the and, and everything is else. The same. It's yeah, but the raptors aren't the reason why the no, things but are the, going yeah, wrong. Yeah, no, the raptor isn't the main. Well, yeah. anyway, but that's the, yeah. that it's 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 pretty different after that point. Yeah, and um, I think better. Yeah, I yeah. think completely better. The ending, I feel like, is a significantly better send-off. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not going to go into a whole bunch of detail in that because I really don't want to spoil it because it is a pretty massive uh, difference from the original, and I think it's worth seeing in person. Yeah. If you want to watch a video online, more than free to do that, but I definitely think don't spoil it for yourself because seeing it in person is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, overall, I think the Jurassic World ride is an update that the park really needed, and it really adds something to the park. And that there's a lot of hype for it, a lot of excitement, and like the line today was like three hours. So. Yeah, it was it was yeah. ridiculously long. So uh, if you guys can make it out to Universal Studios Hollywood at some point, make sure you ride Jurassic World the ride. And then if you're all done getting all sucked on the ride, you can go over to the Isla New Bar. Yeah. And grab a drink. Grab the a whole drink. surrounding area is very nice now and yeah. very uh, refreshed. So. And the uh, the dinosaur encounter, you know, the raptor encounter. Yeah, all there's that. a lot fun. of new stuff. There's yeah. a lot of new stuff that comes along with the ride that really makes it a big difference. Yeah. So we really, really enjoyed it. We had a great time. Yes. Love the new edition, and we'll be going on it more and more. Sure. So make sure you check us out at ThemeParkDuo.com or check Theme Park Duo out on all social media channels. It's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. I said to Gabe today, isn't it typical that after we did our episode of five things we'd like to see come to Universal Orlando from Universal uh-huh. Hollywood, they introduce all this crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, add that one thing to mine. Yeah. <laughs> Take off. <laughs> it does look awesome, though, that uh, Mosasaur yeah, scene the in the tunnel oh, wow. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, a- and like they said, the, air, the whole area around it, just doing that little bit of updating, you know, to the to the area really makes it feel like Jurassic World as opposed to Jurassic Park. They yeah. Did a really good job. They haven't announced ours yet, right? No, I think the again, I was discussing it with Gabe, and I think that they're doing this one, and I think they will see how it goes down with fans, and it seems to be going down incredibly well. Yes. Uh, and then they'll gauge that to whether they bring it over to Orlando, but personally, I hope they do. However, mm. you do realize it's going to bring more complaints because of screens again. But no, but, but, like but we said how, before, I mean, but that's how you use screens. Yeah, it's, that's it's amazing. using them well, yeah. which this does. Oh, no, but you know, you got to get the yeah. the complainers. You oh. couldn't do that any other way, but no, I think but it that, looks spot on. Yeah, it really does oh, look no, good. I think, yeah, as I said, that's that's the way to use screens. Out that excited me. Whether you watch the video or not. <laughs> In oh. fairness, Chris, even if you do watch it, you're not going to get to experience it at Orlando if they bring it to Orlando for True. at least another year. I'll probably forget about it then. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We watched okay. it. It's- I recommend right. checking it out. It's, it's really cool. And yeah. to see the how, how they implemented the screens yeah. is definitely worth it to see. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Uh, yeah, and uh, Nikki and Gabe will be doing a full review on their next show, Season 3, Episode 11, out on Monday, July 15th. So be sure to check that out. That's the theme park duo again, wherever great podcasts are found. Yeah. So whenever you find those, you can find them. And don't forget, UUOP The Weekender tickets are still available. What's the what's the dates for that again, Lee? October 4th to the 6th. <laughs> we yeah. <know> this. <laughs> yes. People might be interested in that information. Yeah, it's October but 4th to the 6th. Yes. But there are only 11... Do, 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 do. Wow. Scary. Ah. Oh, tickets left. Oh. 
So get yours. And if you get ticket number 11, that's that's a special ticket. It's Stranger Things themed. <laughs> Stranger Things have happened. Uh, <laughs> It'll be customized for you specifically by Lee. Okay. Grant out. We can make that happen, right? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get to have waffles with Lee as well, I think, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. If you get ticket number 11, we'll, we'll buy you some waffles and you can eat them with Lee. No, they need to be, uh, what's the ice cream place called? I've already forgot. Scoops Ahoy or whatever yeah. it's called. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that Scoops sailboat. They better have that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, hopefully we'll have a show where we talk about that. Oh, yes, we will. We will. Yeah, some fun. I got to start it tonight. Yes. You haven't watched any uh, of it yet, Chris. No, no. I won't say what I was going to say. I'm starting today. Yes. It's so good. It's, I'll say that it's the, the best season so far, in my opinion. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah like grip me right from the beginning and it's just it seems like it's like so much more exciting than it has been in previous seasons so very very excited very excited for the house can't wait for yes. it yes we'll get there once I've said before when 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 everything's announced we're going to get Julie Zimmerman on and we are going to do our full Halloween Horror Nights discussion and everybody that's coming to the weekend there is going to wear uh, Hoppers Hawaii <laughs> 5 shirts <laughs> making this happen and you have or to you grow can your hair long, like Target. So, and everyone has to wear the crappy hair like Billy's. Definitely, and dodgy your, tashes. Your little pencil, yeah. yeah, your little pencil mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, if you want to come out and party with us, make sure you head over to uop the weekender dot dot com, and we're going to end with another Universal is, and this one's from uh, Alexa. I'm not going to say your last name because I'll mess it up. And then, <laughs> Chris, what's the last name? Um, I don't even know it. No, oh, man. <laughs> Lorero. Lorero, there we go. So if you want to be involved, just send us your answer to what Universal is to you in three words or less and send that over to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Uh, and Alexa says, Universal is part of me. See you next week. Cut, print, That's a wrap for another episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review while you're there. Not an Apple user? You can listen on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, or your podcatcher of choice. Email us any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. Just search uuopodcast. Keep up with the latest news, rumors, and updates on our blog at uuopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.